and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and today I am showing you all my November TBR. So during November I will be taking part in Nonfiction November which is a readathon, I call it a readathon, I think you can call it a readathon, it's a month long, uh, run by Olive from A Book Olive and Gemma from Nonfic Books where you read nonfiction for the month. Um, you can read one nonfiction book if you want, you can read Ten non-fiction books, you can read whatever you want. A hundred non-fiction books! You're going to read a hundred non-fiction books, David. A hundred and one. A hundred and one. Um, I am going to be reading non-fiction books for the whole time. That really made me jump. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be reading non-fiction books for the entirety of the month. I feel very, very excited about it. I've got some from the library, I've got some from my shelves, and I've been through and pitched one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there's two that I'm going to be listening to on audio as well. Oh! And two that I'm reading at the moment. So potentially, if I read all of these, 14 books, 14 non-fiction books, which has never been done in the history of me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. So I'll start with the um, the audiobooks. I am going to be listening to Eat, Sweat, Play um, by, I've forgotten the name, the person who wrote it. I will insert a picture of it here. Anna Hassel is coming to my mind. I feel like that might be it. Um, I'll insert a picture of it here. This is a book about women in sport and getting women back into sport. I bought it for my um, best pal Emma. Emma and I filmed a video together. I'll link that down below actually, um, where we were just talking about bookish things together. I used to do, well, I still will be doing them, book chat with videos with people who I know in, in real life. Um, and at the end of that video, I give a recommendation to that person. And that recommendation I gave to Emma was Eat, Sweat, Play, um, which is, she, she's really into her sport, Emma, and I just thought it'd be a really good um, thing to read. And I've heard such wonderful things. So I thought I would listen to the audiobook, which is narrated by the author, which is wonderful. And I'm also planning on re-listening to um, The Year of Living Danishly, if I get a chance to, um, which is one of my favourite audio... Well, yeah, is one of my favourite audiobooks of all time um, by Helen Russell about a woman who moves to Denmark for a year um, after her husband gets a job working in rural Denmark in a place called Jutland for... Um, Legoland. So, and I love that. I love the set out. It's set out into months and um, talks about different, I mean, you've probably heard me talk about this a million times, talks about different aspects to sort of like the Danish lifestyle per month um, and loved it. So those are the two audiobooks I'm planning on listening to. Um, I'm also currently reading The Edible Atlas by Mean Holland, which I'm very enjoying. Um, lots of, uh, I'm about halfway through this, um, so I'm hoping to finish that in the month of November, talking about different cuisines from uh, 39, 39 different cuisines throughout the world. And I'm also, oh David, you wouldn't run and get Names for the Sea, Strangers in Iceland off the book, off the uh, bed for me. It's sort of like, look, it's very pale blue and it's got people in the sea on it. I'm also um, currently reading for the Autumn Readathon, um, Names for the Sea, Strangers in Iceland by Sarah Moss. You might have heard me just ask David to go and get it for me. Um, I'm, here he comes. And it's a signed copy. And it's a signed copy. Pass it to me. Thank you. You're like Debbie McGee. Um, uh, I'm currently reading this. I mean, I say I'm currently reading. I'm 14 pages in. This is a reread for me as well. I really, really enjoyed this. This is similar to A Year of Living Danishly. Um, Sarah Moss and her family moved to Iceland for a year. Uh, uh, moved to Iceland. I can't remember if it's for a year. Um, after the financial crisis in 2009. Very, very much enjoyed this the first time around. Looking forward to rereading it again. So, those are four books already. And then the books I've got here. I'll start with the library books. Um, the first one I've got is Trans, a Memoir by Juliet Jacks. Now, I will say, with regards to the library books I sort of pulled them off the shelves not really know much about them so there might be a bit of like oh let's learn about this together so Trans and Memoir is um, a book about a woman Juliette Jacques who in July 2012 um, age 30 went underwent sex reassignment surgery um, which she's chronicled here um, she did it in a national newspaper column as well um, so yeah, very excited about that. I've been very much interested in gender and all things to do with um, gender since, well, for, for, for the, most of this year really. Um, and I thought this would be a great a great one to read. So I got that out from the library. Um, I've also got um, Breadline Britain, The Rise of Mass Poverty uh, by Stuart Lansley and Joanna Mack. Um, this is all about how the fact that poverty in Britain is basically at a crisis point. Um, there are people going hungry, in, uh, going hungry in this country, which is unbelievable. And um, how housing is very poor for some and um, yeah it's all to do with that and um, lots of data collated and things like that there's quite a lot of um, statistics and things she says that she can't statistics and things like that throughout there so yeah um, that's very important read this one I was very interested in this is by Jenny Nordberg and it's called the underground girls of Kabul and it's the hidden lives of Afghan girls described as uh, disguised as boys so it says here um, 
Do, 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 do. The Underground Girls of Kabul is about Ozita, a female parliamentarian who sees no other choice but to turn her fourth daughter, Mayran, into a boy, Zara, the tomboy teenager who struggles with puberty and refuses her parents' attempt to turn her back into a girl, Su Sukriya, now a married mother of three after living for 20 years as a man, and Nada, who prays with Shahed, the, underground fe the undercover female police officer, as they both remain in, in male disguise as adults, which I thought would be really, really interesting. It's published by Virago. Um, yeah, so interesting looking forward to that the last one i've got the last library book i've got is one that i've heard talked about on booktube quite a lot it's brain on fire by Susanna callahan um and this is about Susanna herself and how um she started getting headaches and then within a few days um she was having uh, it says here violent fits hallucinating blacking out and she was attacking those around her um and it's her sort of descent into what she describes as insanity um and yeah, so I've heard lots of things about this and um, yeah, looking forward to getting to that as well. So those are the ones I've got from the library. And then these are the ones that I've pulled off my, um, my bookshelf here, which I'm really excited about because they're ones that obviously I've been looking at for a long time, just haven't got around to reading. So I first of all got The Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. Really like this front cover. Um, as I said earlier, I've been really getting into books on gender this year. Uh, the Gender Games I've read and loved. Um, uh, How Not to Be a Boy by Robert Webb. Um... What's the other one? Girls Will Be Girls by Emer O'Toole. Um, and just really enjoying learning about gender. I watched a really good um, programme on BBC earlier this year um, about boy, no more boys and girls. And it was a uh, trialling at a school, not call it, uh, having like a gender neutral school. Um, so these are all, so this book is similar in this vein. And actually in the Robert Webb book I read, the How Not To Be A Boy book, he recommends this as further reading. He said this is like the best study on gender you can get. So I haven't read any Cordelia Fine before and very excited to read that. Uh, the next one I've got is a bio, an autobiography, and this is um, Sarah, uh, Sarah Pascoe, Animal. Um, I have watched Sarah Pascoe, she's a British comedian, um, and I've seen her on a programme that David and I are very fond of, Taskmaster, where I really, really liked her on there. I've had this for a while and haven't got around to reading it yet, and it's all about herself and her body, and yeah, I just feel like... what. I enjoy a sort of like female-led autobiography anyway, and I just feel like this will be really good. So, yeah, I feel like this is probably like the li the lightest, if I can use that, thing of the whole month um, that I've got to read. So maybe I'll get to that sort of halfway through the month, maybe. Uh, this is a book that Mercedes recommended to me. This is Riverine by Angela Palm. Uh, we were talking about this on our um, podcast. I will try and link the exact podcast down below. I think it was one where we were talking about non-fiction books, so I'll link that down below. Um, this is a girl who grows up in rural Indiana, um, Angela herself, um, and she, um, her, one of her neighbours, a lad who um, lives opposite her, um, who she's always um, been very good friends with, um, he gets, he, he, um, he kills a woman um, and he, um, he, he did it, like he, he, he pleads guilty and he did it and it's to do with Angela coming to terms with how someone that you know so well can do something like that and also sort of like revisiting where she grew up and their friendship going up and things like that it's supposed to be beautifully written I love this front cover it looks uh, it looks amazing um and yeah very very excited about this and I was so pumped um when Mercedes was talking about it I just ordered it instantly um the next one is another one that's very popular on um, booktube and i've been meaning to read this all year it is another day in the death of america by gary young um this is a 24-hour period um in just a random day i think it's the 24th of november actually randomly let me have i remember that 23rd of november um it's a, just they picked a random day um in all of sort of like gun crime data um, and found that 10 young lives have been lost to gun violence on that day um, and this is sort of going into the um, the case studies of each of those um, gun crime cases and um, this has been on my uh, TB my 2017 TBR at the end of last year I watched I love watching um, people's best books of 2000 uh, of the year, people's best books of the year and when I was watching a lot of them I was thinking I've got I've got a lot of these books so I made a sort of like 2017 R 2017 TBR of TBRs and this was one on there so I've been really meaning to get to this um, and I think I'm going to start this probably quite early on in the month so um, sounds like it's gonna be incredibly hard-hitting incredibly real and um, incredibly important as well uh, the last one is one uh, no sorry not the last one there's two more uh, one that I've been sent by uh, Pam McMillan recently uh, this is what we see in the stars which is an illustrated tour of the night sky by Kelsey Aside. Um this is beautiful um, it has got lots of different illustrations about um, the uh, 
constellations. I can't remember what I was calling them before, like star arrangements or something. And then all to do with like the earth, uh, different planets. And it just looks beautiful. It really does. And when I was younger, I used to love things about the night sky and um, stuff like that. So I just feel like this is going to be really, really great. And I'm really looking forward to reading it. And I feel like this is going to be one I'm sort of going to come to um, throughout the month, just like re maybe read like about it says constellations right there. So maybe read about each sort of constellation, pick it up. A bit of a coffee table book, if you will. Um, and then the last one is one that I bought from a, um, a comic shop, a graphic novel shop in Brighton. It is Queer, a graphic history by Meg John Barker and Julia Scheel. Um, and this is about queer history. Um, I believe it's UK based. Do, 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 and just all goes throughout, yeah, I believe it's UK, or it might be all over the place base, but um, it's in black and white, and it's all um, the history of queerness, really, so looking forward to getting that as well, so that's quite cool to have a sort of non-fiction um, graphic novel as well, so yeah, those are the books that I'm planning on reading in no non-fiction November. Are you guys planning on joining in and what are you going to read? Have any of you read any of these books that I've mentioned today? Really looking forward to Nonfiction November. I feel really pumped about it. I went on a booktube meetup yesterday, which you may well have seen the, um, the uh, vlog footage from, and um, really, really loved it. And then was sort of getting all excited talking about nonfiction. And did anyone read any of these books that I'd read? And what were they, were they joining in? And we had a really good chat about it. And yeah, it was lovely. So looking forward to reading lots of nonfiction in November. And hope you guys are too. And I will see you all again soon for another booktube video.